Hey everyone, thanks for being here today. My name is Jess Cosburney and I'll be guiding you today through a flow. Um, this is really designed for anyone. Um, specifically, I was um, creating this with teens in mind. Um, and so I think for me today, the focus is on um, the tools that this practice has to offer um, and how it can really support you during um, any time really of transition, of change, of um, needing a support of the ground beneath your feet um, because this practice is truly beautiful and I appreciate it. So things that you'll need today, um, if you have a yoga mat, grab a yoga mat, awesome. If not, I think it's easiest to um, practice like on a hardwood floor or a surface where you'll have some grip, um, but then have something soft underneath you when you lay down. And so we'll begin um, seated. And so I like to be seated on a block. Now you don't need a traditional yoga block. You could grab a couple pillows um, to see it on or a couple books with a pillow on top is always helpful as well. Um, and really all that does is elevates your sit bones so that when you sit, you can sit so a little bit more comfortably. And that's really what we're attempting to do is just sit comfortably. And then Take a moment to close your eyes and then simply breathe. A lot of energy this morning, today, it's Monday. So for me, a lot of things happening. I'm coming in and out of my intention for the week and um, it's nice to just be able to pause and take a deep breath. So do so by inhaling in through your nose, breathe in one, two, Three, open mouth, exhale, three, two, one. Deep breath in through the nose, one, two, three, exhale, three, two, one. Continue to breathe with that count. The eyes can close if that feels comfortable to you. And just start to establish a rhythm. Now, rhythms are really helpful for us as human beings in order to feel comfort, a sense of safety. When we find a rhythm, we trust, we know what's coming next, right? And we can begin to settle in to um, the now. And so see if you can really find a rhythm. And any time that you're feeling like you don't trust, but you're unsure by coming into a rhythmic breath and that can set the stage from the inside out of things like I got this I I know where I'm going maybe not truly but deeply in the heart you know where you're going good and if not already go ahead and seal the lips and start to breathe in and out through the nose exclusively now, you know that when you're running around a track or playing in the backyard or doing any type of physical activity, we start to mouth breathe. And that's that nervous system starting to pick up an elevated heart rate. So when we start and focus on breathing only from the nose, we're sending a signal to our body through our brain that we're okay, that we're calm. So even as you feel that heart rate come up with some of our movement today, I'd like you to try to maintain a nice breath in and out through the nose so that we can continue to signal to the body, to the brain, that we are calm, that we aren't running, that we're exploring this zone within. Good, take the hands to the knees and then let's connect that breath with some movement. So as you exhale, round the upper back, take the chin to the chest. And then inhale, use your hands to pull on the knees and just open up the heart, look up. And then exhale, chin to chest. Now you are more than welcome to move at your own pace to discover the length of your own inhale and exhale. And that's really important to take ownership of this practice. You know, there's so much that's outside of our ability to control. And here, right, you can hear and be with your breath. It can be short, it can be deep. What does it need to be today? God, come up center, roll the shoulders back a few times. And then let's start to take this side to side. So side, 
and side. So let's inhale, breathe and stretch up. And then exhale, come on back. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale. So what you're experiencing right now is maybe some sensation, some stretching of muscles. And when those muscles are tight, it limits our range of mobility. It limits us in our way, in the way that we interact with the world. We come from a place of stiffness. And so yoga specifically, yoga movement like this, asanas, helps to create a little bit more fluidity in the joint range of motion so that we can interact with this world fully. And who wouldn't want that for an end goal, right? <laughs> good. Oh, that feels so good. Try if you forget to come back with to the breath. Ready? And let's just twist to one side, look over your shoulder. Oh, good. And come on back. We're not necessarily with the breath right now, but that's okay. Beautiful. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Awesome. Come on back to center. Bring your knees up. Just take a moment to tap out your toes. Now, I'm wearing socks. I have cold feet, so that's me. There's no rule, right? You do you. And then when you're ready, come on in. Let's begin in tabletop pose. So open your hands nice and wide, and then just take a moment to feel your yoga mat or the earth or the carpet or rug beneath you. Move the hips or sway the hips side to side again, just looking for range of motion, mobility, flow in the body, and then cat-cow motion. So inhale, tip the gaze up to the sky, soften the elbows. And then exhale, bring your chin to your chest, hug the belly button in. Oh, that always feels so good. Inhale, look up, drop the belly. Exhale, chin to chest. Oh, that's that big breath. One more like that. Inhale. Exhale. Awesome. Inhale to a neutral spine, so that means flat back. And then curl the toes under. Walk your hands just a few inches in front of you. We'll, we'll work on our down dog stance in a little bit. And then come on into down dog. So lift your knees up and push your hips back. Now right away, bend your knees. So bend your knees, but at the same time you bend your knees, try to lift the hips as high as you can. And then bend one knee and the other knee. Often down dog initially can be really sensitive. It could have a lot of screaming hamstrings or upper back or calves rush of blood to the face <laughs> ready and so I like to move right away just to give my brain something else to think about while I adapt and I think that's one of the cool things that you need to know about your body and this life is that you are adaptable good Go ahead and bend both knees and settle down and then come forward to a high plank. So let's walk and talk about our down dog stance. So in high plank, your hands are beneath your shoulders and your feet, ready, are, so we're a nice long line from, and I'm high, hashtag spine surgery, don't worry about that, but I, you are eventually going to want to drop the hips. Good, belly in. So from this stance, try not to move your hands or feet and then push back to down dog. Naturally, I want to step my feet forward to take a shorter stance. Just try to work this long down dog. It's going to get and target a bit more through the calves or hamstrings in your body. You can still soften the knees. Come forward to high plank. You can always drop to your knees to work on that long spine. And then exhale down dog. Ooh, you feel some heat, don't you? One more time. Inhale, come forward. And then exhale downward facing dog and then slowly take your time walk your feet forward and then I'm just going to take a wide stance bend your knees and take your hands to the feet and then very slowly take your time allowing the blood we don't want to get lightheaded so just take your time on this first one up going slow bending the knees feeling the earth Initially coming up, eventually coming up and rolling the shoulders. Roll the shoulders. 
Uh, so we're going to build a sun A. I love sun A's. Target really for me on sun A's is you imagine you're sleeping for long periods of time. When you wake up and you have that limited range of motion and mobility, if you can do just one, two sun salutations, you're going to be interacting with the world from a much wider ability to move. And so we'll build this together. So bring your arms up to the sky. So mountain pose, stretch and reach as high as you can. And then exhale, fold over the legs. Make sure that you bend your knees. Inhale to a halfway lift. Now bring your hands to the tops of your thighs, please. And actually, we're going to low row right here. So reach your arms in front of you and then pull them back. Elbows, pull them as high as you can and squeeze them together. Now this pull of the shoulder blades is what you want in that halfway lift. So we'll call this a low row. And then forward fold, let your air go. <sighs> bend your knees even more. Inhale, low row, bend your knees, pull your elbows back. Exhale, fold forward. How about one more like that? Inhale, low row. Look forward, chin away from chest. Exhale, this time plant your hands, step back to that high plank position. Drop to the knees. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, lower all the way down to your yoga mat. Inhale, cobra pose. Lift chin, chest. Your hands can stay grounded or rooted down, but just come up a little bit. Because I like to rock a little side to side. Just again to feel my initial range of motion where my muscles are maybe tight or sensitive. And then exhale, take your forehead to the ground. Curl your knees under. Inhale, tabletop. And then exhale to downward facing dog. Open your hands wide. Lift the sit bones. Inhale. Exhale, bend your knees, step to the top of your space. Inhale, low row, squeeze your shoulder blades. Exhale, fold forward. Again, bend your knees, look towards your shins. Inhale, mountain pose, stretch and reach up, stand tall. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Stay here for one big breath in. And one big breath out. Let's go again. This time, we're going to speed it up a little bit. One breath, one movement. It's meant to get the heart elevated, right? The heart rate elevated. If you can, encourage your breath to stay in your nose. Inhale, mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees. Inhale to that low row. Exhale, hands to the mat. Inhale, step back, high plank. Exhale, drop to your knees, lower to the mat. Inhale, cobra pose, look up. Exhale, forehead to the mat. Inhale, tabletop pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. The slower you can go, great. Inhale, open your hands. Now shake out your head a little bit. Let the tension go in the neck. Good. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Bend the knees. Step to the top of your space. Inhale. Low row. Keep the gaze down. Exhale. Forward fold. Tip the chin to the chest. Inhale. Mountain pose. Come all the way up. Exhale. Hands to heart center. Stay here for a moment. Big breath in. And a big breath out. One more time, friends. Inhale, mountain pose. Reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, low row. Exhale, hands to the mat. Inhale, high plank. Drop to the knees. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, forehead to the ground. Inhale, tabletop. Exhale, downward facing dog. Stay here, bigger breath, inhale. Bigger breath, exhale. If you need to walk it out, go for it. One more, inhale. 
exhale, step to the top of your space. Inhale, low row. Exhale, fold, 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 fold. Good. Inhale, mountain pose. Reach up. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center. And take a big breath in. And a big breath out. Go ahead and put all of your weight into your right foot. I'm going to mirror you. It's going to look like I'm on the right side. So all of your weight into your right foot. We're going to find tree pose. One hand to your heart. Now you're more than welcome to keep toes on the ground, heel to the inner ankle. If it feels good, bring it up to the calf or above the knee to the inner thigh. I'm going to stay here with both hands on my heart just to connect to the beating of my heart from those sun salutations, the warm up of my body. And come back to that equal breathing. So maybe you inhale to three, one, two, three, exhale, three, two, one. Use your breath as a tool, right? Keep going, breathing on your own. Again, send a signal to the body, right? Sharpen that tool like we are here. I'm calm. That is done. Ground the other foot ground. So push it into the earth. Be mindful and thoughtful of what touches the ground. And again, find the opposite side. Ankle, calf, above the inner thigh. Again, two hands to the heart. Pause and notice. Heart rate hopefully is a bit more controlled. And then come back. See if you can extend the breath to four. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. If that didn't work for you, that is okay. And if you fall out, right, just push yourself up and come right back in. Balance is a skill. Calming the heart rate quickly is a skill. And these are all things that we do using our mind and our breath and our body to train and to practice. Awesome. Both feet down to the mat. Inhale, mountain pose. Stretch all the way on up. Exhale, forward fold. Make sure you're bending your knees to support your low back. Inhale, low row. Squeeze the shoulder blades back. And then exhale, plant the hands. Step your left foot back to a low lunge. Go ahead and drop your back knee to the ground. And then take a moment to stay here. So we're stretching our back leg quadricep. Now I don't have two blocks, but you might have, a block might feel really good underneath one hand to stretch into the quadricep hip flexor more. So that's the muscle on the front of the hip. It's responsible for, um, or not responsible for, but takes the beating for all the sitting at a desk or behind a wheel of a vehicle. Ready? And so we're going to hold this pose for a few more breaths. Again, use your breath as a tool to signal to the body that it doesn't need to fight. You might have gone in a little too deep and you might need to come back up and that's okay too. Awesome. And one, go ahead and straighten your front leg now from a half split perspective, just shifting the hips back. Now we're working the back of the leg. This is the home of the hamstring, the connector from the knee or the lower leg into the hip through the sit bones or the sit bone on that side, excuse me. Also tends to be really tight through growth and development, um, from building muscles, from an athletic standpoint. And then again, just general lack of mobility. If you've been sleeping all night long, in the morning the hamstrings are going to tend to be a bit tighter since they've been static. They haven't been moving. Good. Come on up to a low lunge. And then step your feet forward. That might be a little hard. Just give it a shot. Three, two, one. Step your feet forward to touch. Good. Inhale, low row. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale, fold forward. This time, step your right foot back all the way back. Try to get that stance as long as you can. Drop the knee. And let's come into that low lunge again. I'm going to take my block towards my left foot, outside of my left foot, and then just kind of cross through the body. And I'm resting. I really like to think, um, contrary to some beliefs, 
there's really no wrong or way wrong or right way to do these poses there's just a way to do these poses in your body today my body on this Monday is pretty tired and tight and so I'm taking a more restful approach you're feeling like you've got a little bit more energy you could reach your arms to the sky and that's why I like to take some of these videos the same video multiple times so that you can see your body ride the wave because all you know when you work this practice it's not always linear it doesn't you just don't get better some days you have um, more energy and some days you have less I think you know that straighten the front leg and pull it on back some days you feel really good and some days you just feel blah and it's important to try not to judge yourself for days where you have less to give less to be and recognize that those are moments in which you need to recharge and to rest and to heal and by savoring those moments the next day the next time you try again you know hopefully um, that will be a day that that you feel good in your body again hamstrings tight what we're looking for here is that halfway lift that squeeze the shoulder blades together that low row will actually tap into the hamstring a bit more awesome come on forward we're going to try that step forward again so lift the back knee three two one Ugh. step the feet forward inhale low row flat back exhale forward fold good inhale mountain pose rise on up and then exhale your right hand down to the body we're going to find dancers pose now i'm going to use a wall here because again i'm i'm feeling like i need a wall and so you might need a wall and what i like about using a wall is you can use a wall to get in you're going to grab the inside of your foot hug the knees together and once i'm in ready i can then i can always take away from the wall hug the knees together and when you're ready, just find a little bit of kick and extension in your arm and your leg as we're opening up the hamstring, or excuse me, the hip flexor quadricep a bit more. Ah, uh, are you breathing? <laughs> are you utilizing breath as a tool to stay calm in a pose that tends to build a lot of heat? For three, two, and one I'm gonna turn to this side now change sides opposite leg there's never any shame in needing support hug the knees together and then again find some extension in the kick I often like to say that with support we have a tendency to do things even better and stronger in some capacities than when we didn't have support and so recognize that honor the space that's needed and go from there come back to your breath relax the jaw and your gaze good release the foot inhale mountain pose stretch on up exhale fold forward again bend 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 your knees look through the legs inhale low row keep the gaze down exhale step the right foot back to a low lunge stay lifted this time on the back foot drop your back heel and then let's rise up to warrior one good so the real difference in warrior one is your back heel is down and that might mean that the stance the space between your legs needs to be shorter so if that needs to happen do so and then you're bending your front knee towards the top of your mat and you're shifting your hips towards the front knee they might not get there but finish the rotation with your chest as you reach your arms up good grasp a big ball in your hands and take a breath in reach up and then like rain let the hands come down as you exhale breathe and sweep your arms up exhale let the hands float down how about one more like that breathe in and breathe out inhale sweep your arms up and then exhale open to warrior two so i'm going to shift my hips and my chest to the long edge of the mat 
straighten both arms, but then take the gaze over towards the bent knee, the front fingertips. Awesome. Keep it nice and long and stretch. You can look down at your front knee just to ensure that it's pointing forward towards your front toes in the direction of your front fingers. And then pull your belly up and in. And try to stretch your arms as best as possible. Again, with the breath, inhale, let the arms float up. Exhale, let the arms float down. Inhale, let the arms float up. Exhale, let the arms flow down. One more like that. Inhale. Encouraging breath. Exhale. Inhale, straighten both legs this time. Now turn your toes. Yeah, so they're facing the same direction. Again, soft knees. Start to hinge at your hips and walk your hands down to the ground. Now you might need a block here. I know I love the use of a block here. It's really easy to bend and round the spine and drop the chin to the chest, but can you keep that upward back, or excuse me, that low row action between the shoulder blades? And maybe even roll some weight into your toes, bend your knees a little bit, and see if you can take your flat back down, 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 belly in. Now, in this pose, I often feel my mind start to race. I ask questions like, how long am I going to be here? My God, my legs are shaking. And again, we think about that rhythmic movement of breath being uh, calming to the body, uh, almost a distraction to hold us here. And so if it feels good to you, if it feels like you need it, start to shift weight from right to left. Create a rhythmic pendulum tick-tocking with the hips. And then from here, I really encourage you to connect the breath. It could be an inhale one side and an exhale the other side. Stillness is amazing as well. And if you've moved to the pendulum tick-tock and you're like, mm, no, thank you, then find stillness. And if you're in stillness and you're like, mm, no, thank you, then find the pendulum. <laughs> this is how we learn about what our body needs in the moment. Good. Now take your hands to your thighs, bend your knees, and then very slowly walk up, 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 up. And then turn towards the front of your mat, take the hands to the ground, and then step back to downward facing dog. Pedal out the knees, open your hands. We haven't been here in a while. Notice how the body has changed now that we have a bit more mobility, movement or range of motion in the arms and the legs. Good. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, bend the knees, step to the top of your space. Inhale, low row. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Come on down. Inhale to a low row again. This time, the <laughs> right foot steps back to a low lunge. Actually, let's go, um, excuse me, the left leg steps back. It wouldn't be me if I didn't make an error, right? We all make errors. Again, back heel down. And then come on up to that warrior one again. So opposite side. So left foot back. Again, heel, push it to the ground. Hips are moving towards the front of the mat, and yet the rotation through the chest finishes that direction. Arms extend high. Take as much time as you need to move into this pose. Ah, I'm not necessarily sure I want to say that it feels good, because Warrior One is one of those poses that has the tendency to come in and out and feel like whatever it's needed to feel like that day. And not all yoga, I think you know, feels good. Sensation can have a wide range. Let's breathe in. Let the arms float down as you exhale. Yes, breathe in. Breathe out. Through the nose if you can, breathe in. Through the nose, breathe out. Arms come up. 
warrior two facing the opposite direction. Now you might not be able to see your computer screen, but if you can, I don't want you to look. Just take ownership, trust that you know that you know without seeing me what needs to be done. In warrior two, hips and shoulders are facing the long side of your yoga mat. Stretch your arms from front to back and then take your gaze towards your bent knee, middle finger, reach. You can look down at your front knee and align it over the heel and then add your arms. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, sweep your arms down. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, creating that rhythm. That can be so helpful. One more, inhale. Exhale. Now again, come on up. Turn the toes, so we'll go do that wide leg forward fold a second time. I'm gonna turn so you can see me from this direction. Hands can walk onto the thighs as you lower, 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 lower. Hands to the ground. Bring your chin to the chest. And again, find support that works for you here. What does that mean? So again, it can be stillness. It could be that rhythmic tick-tock motion from side to side. I'm gonna add in another option. So using my hand on a block, or a book or a water bottle. I'm gonna place one hand on the block and then lift my other one towards the sky for a twist. And then roll out the top wrist as I reach. And at the same time I reach, also push down through your hand that's touching the earth. Soft bend in the knees if you've got it. And what a soft bend means is not like a full bend, but it's not a lockout. And switch sides. Opposite hand, push it down, and then reach your opposite arm up, and then rotate the wrist. Again, range of motion, looking for full interaction in this life. That shoulder's kind of creaky. If you've got any creaks, move them out. Again, inviting in space. Awesome. Breathe in. Come on down as you breathe out. Again, walk the hands to the tops of your thighs. Bend your knees. Very carefully come on up. And then to a low lunge, top of your space. And then step back to downward facing dog. Again, pedal out the knees, bending one knee and the other knee. Nod out the head, nod it out, nod it out. Keep getting that tension away from the body. Awesome. Inhale, come up to the tips of the toes. And then exhale, bend your knees, bend your knees, and then step to the top of your space. And let's tuck and curl into a little ball. Tuck and curl all the way in. Bring the chin to the chest. Round out, breathe into the upper back. And have a seat on your mat. With your hands or your feet on the ground about hip distance, take your hands behind you. Now, big, wide hands, as big as you can. Point your fingertips towards your body and then even walk it out a little side to side to ensure that you've got a connection with the whole hand and then lift the hips up as much as you can. Now bend your elbows and push the heart through. Keep the gaze slightly forward and slightly up for three, two, and one. Drop your seat. Come on into boat pose. Grab the backs of your thighs, roll your shoulders up and back. Again, creating a little bit of rhythm. <laughs> For three, two, one, feet down, hands down, heart up. For three, two, and one, butt down, legs up. For three, different expressions. You're more than welcome to and one last time, reverse tabletop lift up as we open the chest, open the heart. Three, two, one, experiencing a bit more range of motion. Heart up, three, two, and one. Crisscross applesauce, downward facing dog. That is a habit if I've ever met one. Again, nod the head and neck out. Step your right foot forward. We're going to come into half pigeon. 
So your right foot moves towards the left wrist and then bring your knee down towards the right wrist and then just kind of settle into your hips. Awesome. And then from here, if that feels good, you can come on down to your elbows. And then if that feels good, you can stack your fists and bring your forehead onto your fist. And right away, come into that rhythmic breath. Breathe in one, two, three. Exhale three, two, and one. Breath is a tool. It can be used to heal, to help release, to de-stress, to free, to energize and awaken. And so you might ask yourself in this moment, what brought you to your yoga mat today? What is it that you hope to achieve or obtain? And then use your breath to obtain that mission, to reach that goal. Mental and mindfulness practices begin with the breath. And slowly come up on the palms of the hands. Take the time to open the fingers wide to see the wide hands on your mat. Curl your back toes under and then just push your hips back to down dog. Again, paddle out the knees. Welcome that new range of motion into your hip. And then bring your left leg forward, please. Half pigeon on this side. Settle down and in. Again, option to stay or drop down fists onto your, excuse me, stack fists, forehead releases. And on this side, I invite you to close your eyes. And start to pay attention to the sounds all around you. What is the sound that is the farthest away that you can hear? Outside your four walls, miles away what's a sound a little closer than that the cars going down the street What are sounds right outside your front door, surrounding your home? You hear the sounds outside of your room. What about the sounds inside of the room? Lastly, the sounds inside your mind, inside your heart, inside your body. Slowly make your way up to the palms of your hands. Push back to downward facing dog again. Open hands all the way back, pedal. Walk the knees, walk the knees, walk the knees. Come up to the tips of the toes, walk forward. That tight ball, again, chin to chest. Try to bring your forehead to your knees. Maybe one or both arms wrap around your shins to hug yourself so, so tight. And then lower on down to your yoga mat or to your floor. Yes, awesome. Ooh, I cannot do that. <laughs> Lowering all the way down. Give yourself a big hug. Hug your knees in. Roll a little side to side. Massage the lower back. 
and then allow both legs to fall to the right as you gaze over your left shoulder. And bring the knees back on in and allow the legs to fall left as you gaze over your right shoulder. 